Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And uh, you have to forgive the noise right now. I decided to make this video at the wrong freaking time. But we're cutting a piece of steel. And uh, this is going to be the front part of the ram. Because we're going to rebuild the ram. Uh, we're going to try to use this piece right here that I've been carrying around with me for years as an anvil on my bench but I think it's going to find a home here I wish I hadn't drilled them holes in it now but oh well they're in it now but this here needs this hole here needs to be higher to level the uh, cylinder parallel with the the waves so uh, so we want to raise this by as much as left over that makes up this piece so if I use this piece and take this and cut it off right there I'm gonna cut everything off of this and keep that piece right there and then while I've got it off, I'll take the mill that flat and make it nice and pretty. And uh, we'll attach this to this and then that piece to the front for this right here. So we're gonna re remake that. And the reason I'm remaking it is because I want this piece, this piece, and this piece to be three different pieces. I want them to bolt up through there. And that way, if I ever need to do any work on it, I don't have to leave that on there. I can take it off. So they welded this thing up so damn much, I ain't even gonna attempt to cut that out of there and redo this one. And because this needs to be raised anyway, by that much so I just went ahead and said I'm gonna make a new head uh, we found a problem with the cylinder uh, not the cylinder itself let me get it and I'll show you Well, actually, we might have a problem with the cylinder. I forgot to show you, or say that. I forgot about it, actually. Um, the, front, the front of this is supposed to be threaded. You look at that. That is some nasty, nasty shit. Uh, and threads are about gone. So, I think the reason for that is because they broke this. That's why this bracket was welded to it. So, this is not supposed to be broke. So, now I see this is a clamp fit. So that when you thread this on, see the threads in that, don't, they look terrible too. So, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. The only thing I can think of is cut this off, get that out of the way, and fix this a better way. Uh, the only way, it actually needs to be fixed by replacing it with another one, but uh, we may have to make this piece. I don't know because there's, there's really no way to fix this, I don't think. I don't think you can uh, weld cast steel and it stay very good. So we're probably going to remake this and um, then I don't know what I'm going to do about this back here. I don't know what to do about them threads. In order to do them threads, I'm going to, I would have to machine these threads completely off till it was flat 
and then re-thread it for a smaller thread. And that would give it a, a nice shoulder to go on on the end of this. But that requires me to have to take this thing apart. Not only that, my lathe is only a 20, 20, 22 or 24 inch lathe. It's not very big. Might be a 27, I don't know. But there's no way I can chuck that up and then uh, re-thread it. So I had thought about just drilling a hole straight through the middle you know, drill a hole starting here and come out the other side and just make the piece go on here. I have to file that down flat or something all the way around and just put a bolt through it, whatever piece I make. That way I ain't, I ain't got to take this cylinder apart because I really don't want to take this cylinder apart. Uh, that requires you to have to rebuild it. It's not leaking. Although, there's something right there that looks like a seal sticking out. Oh, that feels like plastic or something. But it didn't leak. So, I'd just rather not push the boundaries. The pump, the only thing I have to do to it, clean it up, paint it, paint the fittings. And then I gotta press this Lovejoy connection off of there and dress that shaft, clean it up, and then reinstall it because it's, it's pretty much seized on there because I got the set screw out. And I've been putting um, WD-40 down in that hole and then putting the screw back in it so that the uh, WD-40 will seat down on the shaft and hopefully that'll make it easier to press out. Also got to do that on the motor. Here's all my hydraulic fluid. And I'm not so sure that's clean fluid right there at all. It's starting to look like it's not very clean. And here's the motor. I got to do the same thing to it because it's seized to the shaft the Lovejoy is. I painted it black and I went around all these fins and shined them up with sandpaper and then light sandpaper to make it nice and smooth. And I did that all the way around, all the way around here. And then I did the top. How's that look guys? that look cool then I broke the bolts off trying to get the muffler off because I was going to paint it but it's a different paint so I didn't want to paint it while it was on so I went to take the bolts out and I'll be damned if both of them didn't break so this is how I'm going to have to go now I've got another muffler coming for it right here and uh so, hey, look at my other score. I got me another grinder, but this one's mine. You should have seen this when I got it yesterday. It was in a fire, and that's what it looks like now. It only took me about an hour to do it, restore it. <laughs> but I'm thinking about also closing this in right here. I've got the metal to do it with. The only problem I'm having is I don't know if I feel like freaking cutting them long pieces of steel. But I, I want to enclose this completely. So that would give it more support. Uh, right now, if you're pushing a log in it and it's really tight, this here can flex. So uh, got a sharp point on it but I'd like to enclose this by just cutting a piece of steel to put in here 
and then cut one that looks like a wedge to put here and then weld it right across here and here and here and here and here and here Phew, that's a lot of here's but right now this here was just saw cut with some kind of a bandsaw or something and it was done really badly it's not even straight so i'm just trying to grind that down somewhat straight i'm not going to get it completely straight uh so i'm going to clean that up and make it smooth all the way around and i'm thinking serious about taking these pieces and cutting them off i don't need them on a tractor no more uh, i can use the steel more than i need them on this so it just makes sense for me to just cut these off grind that down flat round them corners both all four of these corners round them off and clean that weld up that one there is what this one looked like when I got started with it so now it's nice and pretty so I'm gonna have to do that one the same way uh, this is gonna be a, a very effective tool and it's going to be a very pretty tool. Uh, I got to get a set of tars for it. And I got two different sizes here. Uh, they look like they're about an inch and a half, two inches taller than, than this one here. That one is. That one is a six point nine zero dash nine this one is a six point nine or six dash nine the 90s missing so that must have to do with the height so and they don't even match but i'm gonna leave more in there until until i can till better days in other words uh, on the pump, when I had to take it off, uh, because that love joint or love joint connector was uh, seized on there, it wouldn't come through this hole. So I had to make a slot big enough that I can get the shaft up out of there. So once I unbolted it all, I had to just lift it up out of there with the love joint on it because I had to get it off somehow in order to get the thing in the press. So, I built the tongue today. This was a boat trailer tongue. I forgot I had it. It's on the, it was on the back of my trailer when I was collecting material for, to build my own splitter. Uh, so I made this piece. And then I went and uh, welded a bracket on it and machined the bracket to mount on there. I probably could have turned that around the other way, but oh well. Well, I think my cutting is done. But I got the jack installed. I got that on it. Now, don't that look a whole lot better than it did before? You know, before it was just that little, wasn't very wide at all. So, uh, I had to, I have to make a new stand for the control because this one here was welded on there just like that and it was crooked and All I really had to do was just put a little notch in the weld and then I took the hammer and busted it off because the other side wasn't even welded. They just had, they was depending on one weld. So we're gonna change that and I'm gonna cut a piece of this box channel here long enough that I can weld a, a bracket on the bottom of it that will set on this and 
then weld that channel to it and then we'll bolt this in and we'll do the same thing up here oh well no we might not be able to do that um well yeah it's behind the cylinder where yeah we'll be able to do that we'll just put something up here so we can just bolt it on i don't know i might weld it might just take a piece put a piece of weld on the bottom and the side over here and be done with it it's just to hold the controller so that it's up here where you need it to be uh that's sitting right there so i've got a a new gauge coming for it it's a 3000 psi gauge and uh Right now, I've just got the tongue clamped on until until I'm ready to weld them plates. I've already got the plates made. One will go on this end, underneath this, and then on top of that. And it'll be underneath there like that, and I'll bolt them in. And then we'll do the same thing back here. So that way the tongue can be unbolted from it. Now I don't know if I need three of them. One in the middle. I highly doubt it. I mean, it held a boat. And believe me, them boats are not light. Uh... So, this was a big boat. It had the big old rollers on it and everything. So, if it's strong enough to hold that, it's going to hold this wood splitter with no problem. Uh, so, that's where we're at on it. I've got the uh, breather cleaned up. I got that cleaned up and looking all spiffy. What do you think, guys? I already got some dirt on it. Made the uh, knob for it. Cleaned that up. So now that's ready to go on. I got this cleared up, or cleaned up. Now I'm wondering about this. Every once in a while it'll squeal. So I'm wondering, do you have to put oil down in them things? If anybody knows that, tell me. I think that hole's there so you can put a couple drops of oil Cause there is a sponge like washer underneath that or sponge plug so really the only reason they would have a sponge is so it holds water i mean oil so it oils the shaft so then i got my thing for my lovejoy connector motor bolts but yeah, I'm going to have to make this piece right here. I didn't want to do that, but I may have to. Well, ain't no may about it. I mean, I could put it back like that, but I'll know it's messed up. <laughs> I sure wish I could get that damn shaft in my lathe because I would turn that down and re-thread it. I don't even know if you could get a cylinder uh, piston for this. But I'm not interested in rebuilding this damn thing. I'm least bit interested in that. So, that's where we're at on the uh, trailer build, or the uh, wood splitter build. So now that this piece is cut... I can go ahead and get this piece cut in because I've got it marked right there for my stand. So that's a pretty hefty piece of steel, ain't it? <laughs> anyway, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. You guys have a good one. Later.